Let's talk about patterns. This is what confuses everybody. When I go to a church, when I go to a conference table, when I go down to Google campus, here's these guys, they're richer than anybody in the world. I want microphones that nobody sees and speakers that nobody sees, and I want it to pick up wherever I walk in the room. I go, wow, that is amazing. You guys don't know anything about physics, do you? Okay, that's going to be a real problem. With all the money in the world, that's going to be a real problem. I hear this every single week. My phones ring in my office every day. Um, same thing. They don't want to see anything. So there are some compromises. And before we get to these compromises, this isn't me speaking, this is physics. You know, the great God of physics dictates the following will be true. And we have to deal with this pattern. Here is a cardioid microphone. Cardioid. Why do we call it cardioid? Because it looks like a heart. That makes no sense to me. When people told me that, I never understood where that came from. What that basically means is, if you draw a heart, there's a lobe in the top. So it goes this way. I'm in the bottom of the heart, and you guys are in the top of the heart. So you guys don't get picked up. Back in the 60s, we had no idea how loud we could get. And when the Beatles couldn't hear themselves to chase stadium, the folks at Sure started to think, and me, I was out building speaker cam, and so I started to think, you know, how are we going to deal with this? Because back then, a mic was an omnidirectional microphone, pressure gradient microphone, built only one way, and mics picked up everything. That was what a mic was supposed to do. So all of you who are sitting there quietly, if I had an omni tonight, that wouldn't be a problem. But do you know how loud it was when those girls were screaming when the Beatles came out? That's all we heard. So the Beatles were complaining, the girls were going crazy, and the sound guys didn't know what to do, and we had to come up with what some brilliant engineer termed the cardioid. But basically what it is, it's this mic will pick me up, and it won't pick you up. Hey! Because it has a null point in the back. This is not rocket science. We just didn't want you guys in the mic. So a cardioid was invented. Sure, very cleverly patented the name unidirectional, which means one direction. Ah, wish I was that person. So a cardioid pickup pattern picks me up and it can kind of fade pretty quickly. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Both. It's a great thing if you're a rock and roller playing on a loud stage and you don't want your back line coming in your mic. This is a big concern of us guitar players. We do not want my guitar great tone being ruined through front of house coming out the mains. So this cardioid microphone picks just me up and in a dynamic, now we're using the pattern with the mechanics, it fades off quickly because I don't have pressure on that speaker. However, when I come into a condenser microphone, you'll see that this actually can pick up farther because it's much lighter, free spinning. It doesn't have that what we call proximity effect. Still a cardioid. As we get into super cardioids, this is the big confusion. Well, what's a super compared to a cardioid? What's a hyper compared to a super? And all it is is what? Tighter. We want tighter and tighter and tighter. Things get louder and louder and louder. When I have drums, I don't want this drum leaking into this mic. A cardioid, depending upon where you put it, may have too much bleed from the other drum. So what we've done, and you'll see this in the books, is we just tighten the heck out of that pattern to just pick me up. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's both. If I know how to sit in front of that microphone, it's great. But if I kind of wander around like my bass player and get really excited and kind of go around like, it's a bad thing. So more can be better, more can be worse, just like anything. And I can talk about wine now. Um, but if you're going to use a super cardioid, you have to tell the singer, kiss the mic. It works great. So super cardioid. I kind of threw out what Omni is. If I had a boardroom table, one to pick us all up, or that microphone on that camera, it's going to be an Omni. In case anybody speaks up or wants to do that, it picks up from everywhere. Omni microphones are typically used in video conference applications where there's no live speakers in the room. They pick up the whole nine yards and they send it downstream through the codec. They also are great for lavaliers on your body because they turn into a cardioid against your surface. What that you know the super cardio and the hyper? Why do they have like a pickup pattern so it picks up from the back like a little bit? Good question. 
I got off, I got off, I got I derailed myself and I forgot to finish up what a super does. When we squeeze this microphone, something's got to give. And where it gives is out the back. And a hyper squeezes so much that sure believes we shouldn't make them. And I do too. When we first came out with our first super cardioid and Lee Greenwood and all this stuff, went out and sang with this microphone and it was really cool. And all of a sudden we realized, oh my God, did you hear that? That super cardioid spits out the back that if you have one of these puppies right in the right way, it's really bad. And we had to quickly reconfigure the boxes and the education. We had to put this little thing on your beta 58 or beta 57 to be able to say, put this on your thing and keep your monitors over there 60 degrees. Remember that? That's what supers do. So as we tighten up this pattern, we have to move this wedge out of here. Now, today's world, what's the answer? In here. No feedback. Same sound every night. And that's, an, that's another clinic. Okay, a lot of people are wanting to go in here, ears as we call them. Um, you get to forget about that, but to answer your question, it was a good one. Hyper just takes it too far out the back. It's almost a bi directional microphone. So we stop our crunching at a super. How loud should a mic be? Where is zero VU on the mic? What should happen? You know, there's a lot of folks that have all the power in the world and all the speaker in the world, and there's some of us that don't. And when we did our, this is going to be kind of a sure pitch here. When we came up with the beta series, we thought beta should be for pros. These guys are on stage, they're good, they know how to use mics, we're kind of wrong in that, and uh, they should be a little louder. So we actually are talking about dynamic and condenser that has 5 dB more gain. Is that a big deal? Anybody that mixes sound, is that a big deal, 5 dB? Well, 100 watts to 200 watts is how many dB? Three. So five dB in this beta microphone for a small, cheap, little PA that that's all he's ever going to have. And that's all, you know, you can actually buy a beta microphone and more than double your output, provided feedback isn't an issue. You with me? That matters. I'm not going to point at anything here, but you have a small PA, that's it. You have a guitar amp, you're growing up. I mean, I used to play guitar out of my dad's uh, tape recorder. <clears throat> that little big three-room speaker. And to some applications, this beta microphone can make the difference between night and day. Because it's 5 dB hotter, it is available dynamic or condenser, and they're supers. Steely Dan, Roger Nichols, these guys have the greatest ears in the business. They were with us the whole way when we did these things and how we wanted to you know, develop these. We, we work with a lot of stars. This beta series back in 1990 was a big, big hit. Okay, I told you the difference between the 57 and the 58. What's the difference between the beta 57 and the beta 58? Nothing. I actually think this mic, without the ball, looks better. My personal opinion. I was on the rep council committee, and you know we had to argue for the whole weekend. This originally was orange, now it's blue. Thank goodness. And we thought, okay, let's do away with this difference between this mic that pops and this one that has this grill with this brightness. So we make the Beta 56. One of my favorite mics. You put it on a <clears throat> put it on a boom, and never comes off. A 56. A 57, a 58, the same mic, okay? Super cardioid, dynamic, available in different mounts. So, here's a sales plug, sales secret. <laughs> you can come buy a Beta 57, 20 bucks less than a 58, same mic. Unless you gotta have that round ball. 